So I'm here at Sunny Ardley and I'm going to show you how to put your phone onto your phone scoping adapter. So I've got a generic third party phone scoping adapter made by Viking. This can take any phone and the idea is that you simply adjust the adapter to fit your phone. So the phone is held in place by four rubber clamps as you can see here. They can move on this particular adapter for the width of your phone. And then you pop the phone in place, you align it so that the camera is lined up with the hole at the top. Again, this adapter comes with a series of rings which are designed to fit various scope IP sizes. So you choose the correct ring to fit your scope, pop the phone in place and away you go. Now there are other adapters that are designed for specific scopes or specific phones or a combination thereof. There are also third party generic adapters to fit any phone and any scope that will remember um, where your phone goes. So it makes it very quick and easy to put the phone into position. But with this one, it's not difficult at all. You offer the phone up, you turn the clamps so that the phone is held in place. You then spin round, quickly line the camera up in the right position on the adapter so that it's ready to go when you pop it onto your scope. I've also got a, uh, a strap on the phone so that it makes it nice and easy to put it around my neck when I'm carrying it around. And I've also got this little remote control adapter or Bluetooth adapter that makes it very simple to take your pictures. So instead of having to jab the screen of the phone and potentially jog the phone, which can obviously upset the image, once everything's lined up, you just simply click a button and the picture is then taken. So hopefully we're gonna uh, have a look and see if we can get some pictures. So the phone is now on the adapter. I'm videoing through the phone and you can see at RD at the moment, we've got Mallard, we've got Gadwall, we've got Coot and Moorhen. So there's lots of things on the water but they're all a fair distance away. So we're gonna see if we can get some images through the scope. Now I wear glasses, so my scope is usually set so that the adjustment on the eyepiece is wound all the way in for my glasses. The first thing I'm gonna do is wind this all the way out. Now I found that this gives you a better crisper image because giving that little bit of eye relief makes it easier for the camera on the phone to focus. Now I'm gonna pop the phone onto the adapter and just simply offer it up as so and hopefully we can now all see there's a nice circle on the adapter which is what we're, I'm, I'm looking at through the scope right now. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom into the image a little bit just to crop the circle out and I do that because it just makes it easier to focus and easier to look at the uh, the target and in fact I've got a nice shoveler in the middle there don't often get them here so that's quite a good good start so easier to see the target and as you can see of course we can take video doing it this way as well as um, taking photographs so I'm now going to see if I can zoom in using the scope so zooming right in now 50 times magnification now that shoveler is right at the back of the reserve I'd say the distance from here is a good I don't know 150 plus meters 200 meters maybe so that's quite a distance away and as you can see we've got some nice video footage of the shoveler just sitting there not doing much to be fair um, but it's nice and sharp and colourful and certainly a, a better image than I, than I would be able to get with my camera even though I've got a reasonably long lens on my camera. So I'm going to stop the video now and I'm going to use my little clicker to take a couple of pictures as well. Um, before I stop the video you can of course, and I don't know if this is going to work but I'm going to give it a try, you can twist the phone round and you can record in landscape as well. Um, so a bit shaky because I haven't set it up for that. I might try that in a second, but you get the general idea. Okay, so as mentioned previously, um, you can record in landscape as well. If you're taking a video or even a picture, sometimes it's nicer to do it in this format. And as you can see, I've just reversed or rotated the phone round on the adapter. Probably not quite straight, but um, you'll have to forgive me. Uh, but you get the general idea and you get a nice landscape view of the wildfowl. And again, you can um, move your scope quite easily um, to keep up with what's what's going on and of course you can touch the screen and focus on various different parts so I'm focusing on the reeds in the background there and then bring the focus forwards again for the shoveler um, so nice and easy to do on a scope it's going to be nice and steady because it's on a tripod of course and you can get some really good video footage that you probably wouldn't be able to get with it with your standard camera 
So as you can see, it's not just ducks and geese that you can phone scope. I'm phone scoping a green sandpiper at the moment, feeding on the edge of the reservoir, and I'm probably 30 or 40 meters away and getting some lovely views through the scope and the phone. So one thing that I forgot to mention is that it's often easier to line your scope up with the birds or bird before you attach the phone. I would hope that's fairly obvious, um, but it just makes life a little bit easier because obviously once the phone is in position, it's not quite as straightforward to align the scope with the target. So we're going to finish with some uh, just some video footage of Gadwall feeding on the reservoir. Um, which is quite nice really. If I can find any. As you can see, easier to uh, to line the scope up beforehand, but we'll get there in the end. And there we go, nice male gadwall, just having a bit of a snooze in the morning sun. So hopefully that goes some way to helping, and if you have any questions, let us know. Thank you. Here's my kit for digiscoping with a camera. This is a Lumix G7 with a 20mm pancake lens. I use a Swarovski SDX telescope and I do that via the digi adapter. I've got an Arca Swiss plate on there. That doesn't come with it, but it's fairly cheap to put on and just clips onto the Arca Swiss plate on my camera. So my camera's ready out of my bag. Um, I've got extra bits that I will put on sometimes, but for a simple digiscope, I've got my subject, the horse in the field, and I'm going to hit, uh, I've set my focus to manual focus and to a macro, the closest um, in focus that I can get on here, uh, 1.7 tidiest aperture to open wide the aperture, manual mode. And literally I'll hit record here to show you also what it looks like on here to looks like on here to mount up screw that down um the horse has moved but we are in I'll just square it off there we go and I'm shooting So here's my setup. I've got in a sheltered area out of the wind because I'm trying to make sure there's no vibration, no wobble on that scope and camera tripod at all. You'll notice I've put my bag on it to weight it down. I've also got the neck of the uh, the neck column on the tripod is right down, so there's no wobble there. And I've also got a shutter release button. Uh, connected to my camera so literally I can hold this without touching and wobbling the system and shoot pictures. The other thing that I've got you'll have noticed I have a Rode microphone it's one of the Rode video ranges that gives me uh, sound from the field if I'm actually shooting video and off it comes there's a digi, digi adapter I can obviously just screw that screw there straight into my camera and the red little mounts there are made to line up where your camera needs to be because it's absolutely imperative to keep your camera square to the telescope and have it as close in as possible the beauty of this system is it's going in exactly the same place every time and the um, and once the um, once I've zoomed in the lens on manual focus to the macro mode because you you're literally focusing on that image that's been produced in your telescope just down the eyepiece then the front of the lens is almost kissing the front of the telescope so there's literally zero vignetting or very very little vignetting that I have to worry about with this system um, I just line it up lock it in off I go obviously easier on the angle ones but then you're not going to or you're going to struggle to take shots of birds in flight looking down at an angle oh that's nice 
So we're about a mile and a half from the Thames here and the gulls regularly use this route to go into roost on the river. This is going to be wobbly because I'm hand handheld but the point is if that were some rarer bird I could potentially get some image of it identify it later. Bit of a flyover action, I've just heard some ringneck parakeets coming in. Yeah, I might have something for you there. The beauty of having this adapter, this Sarka Swiss adapter, is if my battery dies in the middle of videoing something I can just literally half release this slide it across drop the battery catch or memory card and replace it and put it in because of the maneuverability I can move that plate up and down side to side I can uh, keep this for future cameras yeah that's the digi adapter and what I use for my micro four thirds uh, Lumix T7 very happy with it show you a few images um, that I'm pretty pleased with uh, suits me